Shalom and welcome to the Light of the Hill Ministries. In today's teaching, we will be continuing in Genesis. If you want to follow along, I will be posting this in the comment box below. Now, onto the teaching. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and brought forth a faction. Two years after the flood, and after he brought our, brought forth a faction, Shem lived uh, five hundred years, and brought forth his sons and daughters. And our faction lived thirty-five years and brought forth Shelach. And after he brought forth Shelach, our faction lived four hundred years, four hundred and three years, and brought forth the sons and daughters. And Shelach lived thirty years and brought forth Eber. And after he brought forth Eber, Shelach lived four hundred and three years and brought forth the sons and daughters. And Eber lived thirty four years and brought forth Pelech. And after he brought forth Pelech, Eber lived four hundred and thirty years and brought forth the sons and daughters. And Pelech lived thirty years and brought forth Reu. And after he brought forth Ray, Pedek lived 209 years and brought forth the sons and daughters. And Ray lived 32 years and brought forth Zedrug. After he brought forth Zedrug, Ray lived 207 years and brought forth the sons and daughters. And Zedrug lived 30 years and brought forth Nehor. And after he brought forth Nehor, Zedrug lived Two hundred years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Nahor lived thirty nine years and brought forth Terech. And after he brought forth Terech, Nahor lived one hundred and nineteen years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Terech lived seventy years and brought forth Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And this is the genealogy of Terech. Terech brought forth Abram. Nahor and Haran. And Haran brought forth Lot. And Haran died before his father Terak in the land of his birth in Hur in Ur Chastim. And Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Yiska. And Sarah was barren. She had no child. And Terak took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, his son Abram's wife. And they went out from the Ur Kazdim to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terak came to be two hundred and five years and Terak died in Haran. Genesis 11, verses 10 through 32. Now we'll focus on Abraham because that's where our story needs to go. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and brought forth our facts at two years after the flood. Genesis 11, verse 10. This chapter concludes by tracing Shem's ancestors whom Yahweh chose to make famous in order to bring man to unity his way. And now it takes us all the way to Abraham, beginning with Shem. We also get some good background information on Abraham and his family, for example. Abraham's father's name was Terah, and he had two brothers named Nahor and Haran. Lot was Haran's son, but Haran died. Abraham married a woman named Sarai, as we could see. Some believe that Abraham and Sarai were brother and sister, according to this verse. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this matter? And Abraham said, Only because I said to myself, The fear of Elohim is not in this place, and they shall kill me for the sake of my wife. Yet she truly is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. Genesis 20, verses 10 through 12. 
This appears straightforward. But the problem is that Yahweh himself has declared that such a union is an abomination in his eyes. But you, you shall guard my laws and my right rulings. I not do any of these abominations, the native nor the stranger who joins among you. Because the men of the land who were before you have done all these abominations, and thus the land became defiled. Leviticus 18, verses 26 through 27. And the abomination would be the illicit relationship with his sister. And the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or elsewhere, their nakedness you do not uncover. Leviticus 18, verse 9. Yahweh would not allow such a brother-sister relationship or call them righteous, because their lineage would usher in the Messiah. I doubt Yeshua would come from an incestuous line. So, how do we reconcile this passage? If we look closely at the verse and understand Shem's lineage, we can see that he had sons and daughters. We can see that they had sons and daughters all the way up until Terah. And after he brought forth a faxit, Shem lived 500 years and brought forth sons and daughters. Genesis 11, verse 11. With the exception of Terah, this phrase, and brought forth the sons and daughters, is mentioned in every generation. Terah lived 70 years and brought forth Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Genesis 11, verse 26. Consider this further. And Terak took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife, and they went out from from them. They went out from Ur Kasim to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. Genesis eleven verse thirty-one. Terak referred to Sarai as his daughter-in-law, despite the fact that supposedly she's also his daughter. Why would he marry one of his sons to his daughter? This makes no sense, but it does make sense if Sarai was Abraham's cousin through his grandfather's line, as I'll explain. Nahor, Terak's father, did have did have daughters, as we know. And after he brought forth Nahor, Sarah lived two hundred years and brought forth sons and daughters. Genesis eleven verse twenty three. This would make Sarai Abraham's relative, such as a cousin. Now the Hebrew word for sister is achot, strong number H, two hundred and sixty nine, meaning sister, half sister. Relative, beloved, bride, figuratively of intimate connection. In Genesis chapter 29, Laban is called Yaakov's brother. And Laban said to Yaakov, Because you are my brother, should you therefore serve me for naught? Let me know what your wages should be. Genesis 29 verse 15. Uh, we know that Laban act is actually Yaakov's uncle, and Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out to meet the man unto the well. Genesis 24, verse 29. The point is that brother can be used in the sense of being one's relative. So this would make Sarah his cousin, which would be in keeping with Leviticus 18, and keeping the messianic line pure for the Messiah. Another word can mean can also mean uh, uh, the word father can also mean grandfather. A good example of that is used twice in Second Samuel nine, verse seven, once for Jehonatan, and a second time with Shaul, referring to Mephibosheth. David said to him, "Do not fear." For I shall certainly show you loving commitment because of Yohanan, your father. 
and shall return to you all the land uh, of your of Shaul your father, and let you eat bread at my table continually. Second Samuel nine verse seven. So there is precedence for father to be used as a grandfather. So when Abraham says, let, and yet she is my sister, truly my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, because she became my wife. Genesis 20, verse 12. It is a translation error. It should be thus translated. And also, she is truly my relative, granddaughter of my grandfather, only not the granddaughter of my grandmother. And she became my wife. So Abraham was telling the truth while also safeguarding the messianic line. In this, we see Yahweh preserving the messianic line. Verse 31 contains an intriguing detail that is frequently overlooked. Terah, not Abraham, appears to have received the call to take his family and move to the land of Canaan. Terek and his family were living in ur Kasdim at the time of the call. And Terek took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot, the son of Maharan, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife, and they went out from them from ur Kasdim to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. Genesis 11, verse 31. The ur or Chaldees, was an ancient culture of that area. Sumer was the region's name, and Ur was in essence the capital city. And they left Ur, which was actually a cultural center of the worship of the moon god Herky, who is now known as Allah. Terak left, but instead of heading southwest to Canaan, he went northwest to Mesopotamia. When they arrived at a particular city, they decided to stay rather than continue on to Canaan. We're not told why. Haran, Abraham's brother, died there, however, and eventually the city was named after him. And it was during this time that Abraham was not yet known, or Abraham was not, or Abraham was not known as Abraham. Instead, he was known as Abram, which means exalted father in Hebrew. It would be many years before Yahweh changed Abram's name to Abraham, which meant father of many. While his father Terah is Strong's number H eighty six forty six, it means delay in Hebrew. This is most likely due to the fact that Terak delayed his journey to the promised land and ended up in a place where he felt settled and eventually died. This heartbroken cry has, heard, has been heard by many parents and loved ones. But you promised. If someone has disappointed us, we have expressed our disappointment. Broken promises erode trust, resulting in distress and pain. In Numbers 30, verse 2, Yahweh says, When a man vows a vow to Yahweh, or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he does not break his word. He does, not, he does according to all that comes out of his mouth. Numbers 30, verse 2. Sometimes we make hasty promises in order to calm a child or end an argument. The responsibility for keeping that promise, however, does not go away simply because we did not think it through. This is also true for Terah, who was instructed by Yahweh to leave ur -Kazdim. We can, however, avoid delay if we keep our promises by remembering who we are which requires faith in Yahweh's spirit. Terak lacked this, and Yahweh assures us that Yahweh's spirit will guide us. But the Helper, the set-apart spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name, 
He shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. John 14, verse 46. And if we want the Helper in our lives, we have to let him make his dwelling inside us, inside of us, as Apollos tells us, that the Messiah might dwell in your hearts through belief, having become rooted and grounded in love. Ephesians 3, verse 17. That word dwell is the same word here as abode, and it literally means just settle down and make himself at home in your heart. Has your heart become Messiah home? Does he feel comfortable there? Does he feel at home? What are the things in your heart that are preventing you from moving on? What makes you delay in doing the things that Yahweh has called you to do and be who Yahweh has created you to be? Once these things are removed, Messiah can dwell in you and see that you are moving in the direction that He desires. It is this love that propels us forward to where we are supposed to be. The next step is to recognize that promises come with responsibilities. If we violate them, we will suffer the consequences of broken trust which is difficult to restore, that we will fall into judgment as Yaakov or James, as he's commonly known, says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. James 5, verse 12. And Yaakov is actually saying, be a man or a woman of your word. When you say yes, mean it. And when you say no, mean it. And don't be the type of person who has to swear to convince someone that you're telling the truth. And the word for judgment is hupokrisis, G5272, which means an answering, an answer, stage acting, condemnation, dissimulation, and hypocrisy. Now, Yahushua said the same thing, but let your word yes be yes and your no be no. And what goes beyond these is from the wicked one. Matthew 5, verse 37. You know, she was said, we don't, when we don't keep our word, we are from the wicked one. And the word for wicked one is poneros, G4190, meaning full of laborers, annoyances, hardship, pressed and harassed by laborers bringing toils, perils, causing pain and trouble, bad in a physical sense, disease or blind, in an ethical sense, evil, wicked. Anything beyond this is simply deception to conceal the truth. When we try to hide something, we become pretenders or actors, making matters worse for ourselves and those around us. Admitting you can't do something or can't take on something is better than breaking your word down the road. This was Tarek's law, and he paid the consequences of it. And finally, ask Yahweh for strength to fulfill each carefully made promise. Yahushua tells us to ask, and I say to you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone asking receives, and he who is seeking finds. But to him who is knocking, it shall be opened. And what the father, and what father among you, whose son asks for bread, shall give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, shall give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, shall give him a scorpion? If then you, being wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father from heaven give the set-apart spirit to those asking him? Luke 11, verses 9 through 13. Promises are a measure of trust. With the Holy Spirit's help, we could keep every single promise we make. 
we need everything Yahweh has to offer. And we don't want any closed doors when we visit Yahweh because He adores us and wants us to be who He created us to be and to do what He has called us to do. So instead of being like Terah, who delayed making his promise to Yahweh, we should be like our father Abraham, who trusted in Yahweh and kept his promises. And we should not be afraid of any work that Yahweh wishes to accomplish in our lives. Hallelujah. Next, Yahweh willing, we will be talking about Abraham and his journey out of Haran. If you like this teaching, please comment, like, share, and subscribe to the teaching. And click on the notification button to be notified of the next teaching. Yahweh bless. Absalom. To your homes.